<clears throat> Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been a long morning, no? A lot of knowledge. So what do you see? What do you see here? It's not a sight test, really. Just a metaphor. It's a black canvas, technically, with white dots, right? That's what's happening here. But if you look at it from a, from a slightly different perspective, you might see adventure. You know, alien civilizations and all sorts of time travel and opportunities and, and businesses, maybe. Um, that's what could happen here. Um, I think it's important to see this that way because it's our choice. It's our choice to see where we want to be. And we, we heard about it before and how change hits us very, very hard. And that's, here's the key. To choose what we see in these pictures, we need to understand the mechanics of change. And we've been all through that the last day. I'm, I'm a designer, right? So I, I, I draw stuff. Um, let's see if that comes up. There we go. I made this myself. It's a diagram. It's a diagram of change, change coming to here. This is exponential change starting to overlap. So usually we see change as moments. And as we heard yesterday, they are converging and they are accelerating. These very important moments of change, like, you know, color TV, uh, internet, Facebook, all sorts of very cute animals on Facebook, and then, you know, all the other very important stuff. And they converge so fast, so they become sort of a flow. And this is the flow we stand on. So they are not discrete moments anymore. This is the platform that is our inspiration. At the same time, each line of the diagram is naturally coded in our DNA as fear, because we fear change. Don't rock the boat, don't change the status quo, right? So we are on a, in a flow of fear, if you wish. That's the choice we're making today. This is what, why we're here and discussing this. And I think if we you know, look into the future, because the change always leads into the future, it's really, really important because, you know, you, I, our customers, partners, your dog, and everybody you know will spend the rest of our lives in the future. So I was thinking like this. If we gather in forums like here, we can actually design and bring these futures to something we, we all want to live in, as we heard before. That's, that's the idea. And I think the future is designable. Let's have a look at these ecosystems, these convergences. It, you know, these guys build rockets. I'd say, okay, that's because one, they are guys, two, they are very rich. Convergence, build a rocket. That's not really true. It's not the whole dynamics here. Um, Japan is developing extraterrestrial construction machines. Wow. Um, Swiss bankers invest in Mars. <laughs> that's the that's first of rocking the boat. Uh, some of our customers, uh, you know, maybe your next Audi Quattro drives on the moon. So this is something new that happens. And I met this guy last year, Joe Ersercel, uh, in France. He worked for NASA for 17 years. And then he said, okay, forget this, I'm doing it my own. <laughs> so he uh, started to build this as a prototype in an American desert, that thing. He will shoot this up in space. By the way, NASA is investing in this now. He will shoot this up in space. He will capture asteroids, he will direct solar, solar power into the rock and, and you know, squeeze out uh, a rocket fuel out of it. Like any kind of Bruce Willis you can imagine. This is happening. I said, Joel, why are you doing this? Martin, don't you understand? We need gas stations in space for those guys with the rockets. Why do we need gas stations in space? We're going to industrialize it. You're going to live there. We're going to have 7-Elevens there. It's going to be awesome. You need to design it. Okay. So we see an ecosystem of changes coming together. This is for me convergence, and I need to think about it. NASA is, by the way, investing in that because they see that this is their business. And this is where humans will grow. But another, maybe a little bit more banal example of, of this, but it's very telling. Uh, do you play with Barbie anything? It's okay. We are. We are amongst friends here. <laughs> I play with Barbie a lot. Um, <laughs> this is Hello Barbie, a new product. And I, I don't know, I won't show this slide, but this, this gentleman have a nice interview with, with, with Barbie here. I want to be a sign. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to be a scientist. Eureka, a scientist. I think 
think science is so amazing. Why do you want to be a scientist? Uh, I always really liked chemistry and physics in school. The study of physics is incredible. <laughs> Take gravity. You can't see it, but the second you trip, it's right there to pull you down. Did you ever fall or trip on something? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, all the time. It happens to me all the time. That's gravity pulling you down, sometimes with an ouch. What do you like about... <laughs> <laughs> you can almost take her out for dinner and almost, uh, you know, <laughs> have a sort of uh, <laughs> I'm not combing her enough. Anyway, it's sort of a Trumpian Miss World quality of discussion going on there. <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. And this is also an ecosystem. I mean, the computer inside this plastic doll is something you did your serious grown-up work 10 years ago at work. Uh, it's Wi-Fi, it's natural language processing, some kind of AI is happening here. Um, you know, all sorts of technologies we didn't imagine in this little thing. Come to, and this is a bigger ecosystem, if you think about it. You know, if you want to design around it, we, we heard several examples. What if, uh, as, as, as we heard yesterday from, from the crime experts, what if the kid expresses that, oh, hi, Barbie, I'm a little bit hungry. Yummy, yummy. You know, and, and Barbie goes, yo, Barbie is cloud connected. This is cloud computing. Uh, Google is there, there are ads, and there's Amazon with drones, and hamburgers starts to come to kids across the schoolyard. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah? Is that the design we want? And what if the hamburger is stolen? Stolen, and Barbie records it. it records the face, there's face recognition, and Barbie calls the police. Hi, is this the police? It's Barbie, <laughs> you know. This, I, I, you're laughing. This is doable. Let's do it. I mean, we can just code it. And there's face recognition. The, the pictures are sent to the police. Done. You know, we need to think about these things. I'm, I'm only saying. So, um, and what if Barbie senses how you feel through her skin, through the plastic? I know it's science fiction, but. You have to think about it. By the way, it's not science fiction, because Neuralink is developing ultra-high bandwidth brain-machine interfaces to connect humans and computers. This is where Elon Musk puts his money lately. This dude uh, connects to another dude in another room uh, with telepathy? No, with electricity. And they're playing 20 questions. They can uh, recognize yes and no. Uh, with brainwaves today, we can recognize your identity quite OK. Maybe that's your next single sign-on on your computer. I don't know. But this is possible. And this lady, um, she's paralyzed. And she's controlling that computer. How? She imagines moving her arms. Imagines. Thought power. This is the fastest brain-machine interface today. Eight words per minute. Because, you know, our brains won't develop much more. I mean, the next thousand years, this is, this is as it is. Sorry. Uh, but they will be connected. You will know the math of the world. You will know all the facts. And you will maybe, you know, go, this is not the presidential election you're looking for. And, 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 and things will be good again. I have no idea. But science fiction is becoming science facts very, very fast. And then, you know, as a designer, I'm looking at these advancements. You've seen this uh, already, right? It's all fantastic. But there is a human relation. It's a bigger ecosystem. There's humans involved. Uh, when they started to kick that dog, people started to call in to, uh, to, to PETA. Um, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> yeah. PETA deals with actual animals. <laughs> actual animals. We, we're busy. Can you go home now? But you see, people have relations to these things. We are humans. We have emotions. We have empathy. The technology and humans grow together. We need to design that world. And I'm, many of you are aware what human-centered human, human -centered design is, right? It's a sort of methodology um, uh, that, that, that drives really good design. And if you want to do that, you need to consider what's human-centered you know, in some years. What's human? What is human? 2040. What relationships do we design? And if you think, Oh, okay, here's a dude on stage talking about science fiction, becoming science fiction. Yeah, but it's just design. No. NASA has a NIAC program that looks for designs or approaches to the future that they haven't thought about. 
They look for science fiction. Because what they're good at is science. And they connect it. And they do it. So see, my job is not being a designer. That's over. Machines will do it much better than I do, designing gadgets. We take decisions every day, you and I. They lead into the future, uh, uh, according to Einstein, at least. Uh, we need to become sort of a fusionist, you know, between the art, the science, and the design, and the engineering, you know, because the next big thing, it's not the thing, as we have learned last two days, it's, it's a relation between things. It's a relationship that we design. And th these are dynamic, they change us all the time, and we need to follow that. And we need to articulate where we want to play a role. So we have all sorts of future fabric that we look at, all these happenings. Then we choose what's, what's the possible futures, the utopian and dystopian. What are the desirable ones? And where can you play a significant, positive role? And then you start with your strategy, by the way, because usually you start with the strategy and then you forgot that exercise. Actually, you just want to go to the roadmap and the backlog, really, because that's what we're good at linearly. So being conductors and orchestrators of that, that's a very important role for us. And we need to do this together because, you know, this kind of design is way too important to be left only to, to designers, right? And, you know, imagining these possible futures, articulating them well, Showing a picture, you know, it's important. These are some guys uh, from, from London subway playing with the subway uh, map across the globe. 2008, they had no idea about Hyperloop. But once you see this, you just cannot unsee this. Yeah, we're getting this soon. Elon, come on, <laughs> dig a hole somewhere and, and start. Because this makes total sense. Futures become truths once you articulate them. And the ecosystems are unexpected, as we saw uh, in the exonomics this morning. What's your business model when there is transparent wood from Sweden? I lived in Sweden. Yes, we have transparent wood, at least in the uh, Uppsala University. Uh, you know the, the metal aluminum, otherwise known as non-transparent? Transparent. Also very cool stuff. And otherwise known as very transparent glass, now as solar cells. And we talked about user experience. What's the user experience of energy? Well, that's it. You just demonetize it, as we talked about. This, you have a house, you have a window, cool. You can charge your Barbie doll. And the house, and your Tesla, and everything around you, your neighbor's car, and everything. So where do you make money? And in, if that sounds like science fiction, it already happened. On March 11th, uh, California was getting as much power from solar, so the wholesale electricity prices turned negative. Uh, and we need to express these business models. We need to think about the futures because they are closer since they are accelerating faster. Uh, you know, I'm working for a big company and 50 years ago, we, we're 45 years old, we could say, hey, we're going to live forever. Give me my pension. That is not true anymore. Because if we don't act like we do, we become meaningless. Feel the taste of meaningless <laughs> and see if you want to be that. Um, you know, and you need to express these futures however you articulate them. It's good design. Fail early, fail often, as they say. This is one that I like, um, an articulation of that future. Let's see. You know, Mary, you expressed a concern to me, and yeah, that's nice, uh, about a month ago that a glutathione supplement doesn't get your uh, uh, blood-brain barrier. So Mary is sick. Research just came out 30 seconds ago must run on some kind of in-memory technology that shows a whole new approach, and I can summarize it for you. Isn't that human, nice, like a friend? Very discreet and, you know, fantastic. Who's in this business? You probably know, heard it, yeah? It's Google, organizing world's information. Not in advertising. What business are you in? How do you design the desirable future you want to play a significant role in? No? And we, we, we saw these advancements, this demonetization of, of everything. Um, the the self-driving cars that drive you to a 3D printed house, so if anybody is in real estate, think again. And, and then uh, these houses are then printed by robots, so, so it's even more, e even cheaper. Um, so I don't know if, 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 you know, real estate is a good business. Or this dude with the sticker 
tattooed on his forehead. Uh, Japanese scientists trying to understand how heart failure and, and tumors uh, occur with this sort of a, a sensor. Think 30 steps exponentially forward, you know, you understand how your clothes will help you to understand yourself. And again, there's an ecosystem. But we fear that. You remember the flow of fear or the flow of opportunities? I think it's very, for me, it's simple. We've seen this curve before. You've done some things before, and you're going to do them again. It's going to have the same result, besides the fact that, you know, this is happening, uh, the exponential change. And if you own this, 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 this red line here, you look good for, for, for a while. And that's a problem. I have this printed out in my office here in Berlin. Because sometimes when you're in a difficult situation, you're not getting really the budget or not getting the buy-in for your science fiction idea. You need to realize why. And, 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 and here's the reason why people continue. Because the, you, you're somewhere here. And your trajectory to the linear thinking looks like that. You're going to fail, Martin. This is all bullshit. Your karma is too big. Like Kodak, you know that they took the decision to say no over and over again. It wasn't one time, oh, we made a digital camera. We don't want it. Move on. Over and over. It's too expensive. The pictures are shit. It's, it's too ugly. They thought this is happening. Yeah. And that's why you build you know, faster horses instead of changing the world, improving people's lives. Okay, so we do not get this exponential thing because of the culture. And you need to choose which vehicle you sit in. It's very important. You need to understand people's needs of the future. Designers' most important tool is empathy because we understand and can predict futures. We design futures. We show futures. Um, the 10 most empath empathetic company on the planet, amongst others ours, uh, do better. Because empathy is good design, good design is good business, because that's innovation. That's correlation with high performance, that's correlation uh, with, with value and market capitalization. Good design is really, really good business. And this is how you spell that. My role isn't to fix pixels, my role is to figure out where design can make the most business impact. Or innovation impact. Maybe you understand now that I don't see a difference between design and innovation. And design or is getting new tools. Design is becoming a strategic, operational, and everything in between uh, a corporate activity. And it looks into the future with absolutely new assets, new content. We talked about data. Data is oil and so on. We said it 10 years ago. I was thinking already then, if data is oil, what do you do with oil? It means nothing. You just spill it in the ocean. You need to translate that. What is the computational design uh, uh, that we need to do on that? Because if content is king, because it truly is, context is King Kong. That's the bigger ape. That's something we need. Because, you see, you change the context just, context just slightly, and it gives you a totally new future to imagine. <laughs> so, you know, the, the data is the same still. Some people understand it very well. They, they understand the social context of things. This is Catherine Fake, very happy, sold Flickr to Yahoo, 35 million. But she understood, I'm not good in this content, the data, the pictures. I'm good in the social thing that bonded people together. So she started to figure out, why are service so hard? Why don't we know each other? What is our social context? What does a cat want when it meows? That's the big question. It wants love and food. Do you eat your berries on top of yogurt or in the bottom? On top. And then she continues to ask questions. And people cannot stop. This is for free. People just do it. Would you tell a child it's adopted? You know, do you love your job? Serious questions. 80 million answers came in. 80 million. 2,000 questions. I mean, we could do this. So this is raw data. This is the oil. What's the context? What does it tell us? I tell you that if you believe in Pepsi, sorry, if you believe in UFO, you prefer Pepsi more than Coke. Yeah, <laughs> if you read Wired magazine, you prefer redheads, 90% certainty. And if you use the fake ID, I think you've been a coach. Have you been a coach? It's okay. You know, I'm not judging, I'm just reflecting. You know, it's not me, it's the data. You ask the right questions and the data doesn't lie. 
right. <laughs> you know, things we didn't know, this is beyond human bias. How large is your TV? And how much is this worth to Pepsi or Coke or your local UFO magazine or Samsung? A lot. Uh, eBay bought it for 80 million. You know, because, because that's the context. That's the complete design, the ecosystem, the convergence. Data becomes information. Information becomes knowledge. And knowledge, maybe, if we use it wisely, becomes wisdom. And if you do any sorts of products and services, you should consider that there is a parallel pyramid. Oh, guys, we have some features. If we add more features into a bag, we can maybe sell this as a product. Forget it. You need to build relationships. Relationships are the key. Design them. Be empathic, and the rest will follow. And this is the skills we need, because the problems are more complex than putting some features in a bag. This is the prediction from World Economic Forum. Complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity. These are all human things, right? And we get help because the real problems are hard, as we learned today. We need a human machine, and this is what I believe in. This is a symbiosis between human creativity and machine intelligence, where we can, you know, amplify and augment the humans. The human machine can show me what I need when I need it because I don't know. No, at least, at least as much as I do, because I cannot keep it in my brain. Point me to the opportunities that I cannot even imagine. I have a whole list of these, I call them UX qualities, user experience qualities. But in the end, they are very human things. 70% more for success, 50% less planning in 2020, if we have cognitive computing helping us to be more human. Maybe even human at last, because, you know, we work with scalable efficiencies and all sorts of standardized activities. For me, that sounds like a program, like an algorithm. Let's skip that and move to building systems that help, uh, help people to be human, discuss, debate, having opinions, being ambiguous and drunk, and all these things that we do that computers don't. Because human creativity is important to solve real problems. And, you know, creativity isn't adjusting margins in your Word document, but writing a love letter is, or writing a white paper, or a book, or having a discussion. That's what we're good at. And, you know, the political debate can then move, if global movement of people is good or bad, to how it actually drives innovation and how you can help it. Because if we don't design these systems, there will be someone that will pay. We saw that divide today on the economics curve. Always far away from the original stakeholders. So, to end up, this is a political activism. We design artifacts, artifacts, design our behaviors. And then that shapes our communities. Communities shape societies. Societies shape politics. Design is political, and it's systemic, and it's compute, uh, computational. It's a totally new thing. <coughs> Think about it. This is an old app. You maybe have seen it. It's called Pen and Paper. Th this guy is a business traveler, so he needs to do his business expenses. Uh, 1969, Mr. Aldrin uh, filled this in, and he said, OK, I used a, uh, you know, a vehicle uh, from my company. It was a government spacecraft. I went to the moon, and I want my $33 back. <laughs> That's it. I think we could use Buzz Aldrin's creativity and humanity and adventure and curiosity and boldness and positivity a little bit differently. Because once we imagine something, we cannot unimagine it. We just want to do it. This is the power of humans and our creativity. Now we have machines that can help us like never before. And I want to design these futures where everybody is included, when you can be human at last, stop hunting and gathering and all these things, and being analytical and mechanical and repetitive. I think we can design futures we all want to live in. And we have two little poetry here, uh, I feel, during the day. So here it comes. You're a ghost driving a meat-coated skeleton made from stardust, riding on a rock. Hurtling through space, so fear nothing. 